Good Captain Ramsay, in the past four years, the Reich has been forced to spend an enormous amount of time, uh, energy, manpower and equipment hunting down escaping prisoner of war officers. Hmm. Well, at least it's rather nice to know you're wanted, isn't it? For us, it's not a matter for levity. There will be no escapes from this camp. Colonel von Luger, it is the sworn duty of all officers to try to escape. If they can't, it is their sworn duty to cause the enemy to use an inordinate number of troops to guard them, and their sworn duty to harass the enemy to the best of their ability. Yes, I know. The men under your authority have been most successful. This man, Ashley Pitt, for example. Caught in the North Sea, escaped, recaptured, escaped, recaptured. Archibald R. G. Ives. Eleven escape attempts. He even tried to jump out of the truck coming here. He built the thing. He'll know more about it than anybody else. During captivity in Stalag Luft III, Canadian airman Wally Floody had been responsible for the overall design and plan of the three escape tunnels. After the war, he had returned to his native country. Floody had become an insurance executive in Canada. We made a deal with him to come over and spend uh, two months with us, a month of preparation and the first month of shooting. Wally sent for his logbook, and up behind Sturgis on his desk, he had all the little authentic pictures of what Stalag Luft III that had come out of Wally's thing. Oh, yes, he wanted it to be authentic very much. With Wally Floody on board as technical advisor, the filmmakers set about building the notorious prison camp. The real Stalag Luft III had caged 10,000 Allied airmen in six compounds. For the film, the producers built one compound and hired American students from the nearby university as extras. I'm watching here. I'm a lifeguard. House! 